Shalom, shalom. All right, before I begin, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well and who I learned this truth from through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Our Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son, and Bahashem, Havrachakwadash, meaning in the name of the Spirit Holy, or uh, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay, and that's all in the uh, Paleo Hebrew tongue. All right, the Holy Tongue, the Lashwan Kodash. Um, so, like, it. peace and salutations to all the Akim, the brothers that preach this word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, and Shalawan to the whole elect, the sincere believers, all right, scattered wherever you may be, Shalawan. All right, this is uh, going to be a little lesson um, over the coming destruction that is coming uh, upon the earth, that is coming to the earth, primarily Babylon the Great. Um, and basically the, the fierce indignation of the Lord and um, him returning with his angels, with his chariots uh, to render fire. And brimstone upon this place for its wickedness, all right, for its idolatry, for its for its uh, wicked customs, all the above. Um, you know, I was just reading over Psalm seventy six, and I've been one. I've been meaning to do this for a little minute, but the spirit is on me now to go ahead and uh, create this little um, epistle. All right, so Lord's will to be edifying and exhorting to the flock. So to begin, I want to start in Psalm seventy six and seven. It reads, Thou, even thou, art to be feared. Speaking of who? Yahweh. All right, the, the only power, the only true power, the only true God. It says, Thou, even thou, art to be feared. Who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Okay, and when I came to mind, uh, who can abide? Khan, I'll grab both. This is Joel 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. And that camp is uh, speaking of, of them chariots. All right. He is it's also coined as the Lord of hosts, hosts going into army. So he's going to have his, his fleet, his, um, right, his army of chariots, of his angels. It says, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? And let's just grab the um, definition of abide. Who can endure it? Who can sustain, bear it? Um, you know what? Let me grab it in the etymology real quick. So like, yeah. All right, it's not giving me much, but basically, who can endure it? Right, who could remain in it? Uh, abide. It's a verb to endure without yielding, to withstand, await defiantly, to encounter, to persevere. All right, and the only ones that are going to be able to stand in that day are the ones that will be delivered, and that ultimately is the house of David, the elect, the ones that were predestinated from before the foundation of the earth to receive salvation in the times that we're in. And that's why we pray and hope that we're part of that number. All right. And then trying to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because we don't necessarily know um, who's going to be saved. All right. Uh, let me go back to this. I'll actually read verse 12, Joel 2 and 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. So now is the time, you know, we should be seeking the Lord, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai. All right. Given that all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons are we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All right. So we, we turn unto the Lord and repent. All right. Ask for mercy. And, uh, you know, come to him in sincerity and in truth, trying to uh, serve him to the best of our abilities in these chains of darkness. Because right? we want to be... Um, you know, covered in the times. We want to be a part of that Psalms 91. 
All right, but let me uh go back to I believe it was Nahum one and six. I have read who can abide it. Yep, Nahum one and six. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Damn, I didn't even know that was in there, man. Hey, call all y'all by Shemel Shai. All right, it says, but with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemy. So he's, he's, he's going to be coming in like a flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he's going to lift up that standard all right, to the elect, and he's going to be that stronghold for us in the day of trouble. All right, Jeremiah 30 and 7, I believe. Okay. He's going to be that stronghold for us, man. He's going to amp us up in the spirit. He's going to give us spiritual power. All right. And he's also going to be the destruction that is going to come upon our enemies. All right. The so-called white man, Esau, Edom, primarily. And then the, the wicked of our people who are also counted as our enemies now. You know, because they're enemies of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know? Um, and darkness, so darkness shall pursue his enemies, but he's going to make an utter end of of Babylon the Great, man. A speedy riddance within one hour, as the scriptures say. But let me jump back. Psalm 76 and uh, 8. It reads, Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth was feared and was still when the Most High rose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Salah. So it, it, the Lord is a is a just uh, a just power and he does everything in balance. This is why uh, a lot of religions and uh, different uh, philosophies and doctrines, they always uh, they hit you with a yin, yin and the yang or the two sides of the spectrum. Because why? Hey, how about Shem Yal Shai? operates on that level you know he's in control of good and evil or he's an omnipotent power so meanwhile uh, while there's going to be destruction you know the earth will be um it's going to be thrown off its course it's going to rock to and fro at the same time hey the uh it said the earth feared and was still so in the midst of chaos there's going to be that peace as well because the elect, um, the elect are going to be saved within a twinkling of an eye. And that's beautiful to just, to, to picture. You know, as the missiles are coming down, the, uh, the elect will get beamed up. <laughs> as the missiles are raining down, our bodies will be, yeah, the, our bodies, um, our flesh, I should say, our flesh will be here to burn, but our spirits are going to be raised up, lifted up. It's beautiful. It says, when the Most High rose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. And the meek are who? The Israelites. So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans primarily. And then you also have your, your um, scattered birds. The ones that may look like uh, the heathen nations. Uh, the nations that I didn't list. Or the you know the so-called people that I didn't list, but their spirit and their bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It reads surely and it's like it's Psalm seventy-six and ten. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee; the remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pay unto the Lord your power. Let all that be around, it's like it, Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. So that's what he's coming to do. He's going to send his son, Yahweh Shai, all right, to, uh, to basically strip the power off the kings of the earth that are in rule now. And the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So he's going to throw down the wicked and... Um, bring forth the righteous you know all in proper order and from here uh you go to psalms 98 and i'll read the whole thing and then we'll uh, we'll close out with this and whatever comes to comes through the spirit 
All right, Psalms 98 and 1, a psalm. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. So this right here is speaking of Yahweh Shai. Like we like like we said, the, the Yahweh is sitting on his throne and Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of him, of course. And basically, a Yahweh Shai is just waiting for for the time um to where he can return and do uh do the will of, of Yahweh. Because he's coming back again uh, to give us victory. And he will give us victory. It's all part of the Lord's movie. He's going to do marvelous things and, and give us uh, salvation. Grant us salvation. And he already has. We're just waiting for it to play out. Psalms 98 and 2. The Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. And let me read uh, verse 3. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our power. So, again, the scripture is saying, let me grab it. Every eye, every eye shall see him. I'll just read it right here. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And the clouds will be in what? The chariots. I believe that's Psalm 104 and 3. He maketh it... Uh, I'll grab it real quick and I'll jump back. Yep. It reads, Psalms 104 and 3, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wing, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Alright. So basically the, the clouds will be the so-called UFOs that you see today. That's what they're... Uh, I represent it as, all right, the uh, so-called UAPs, those are the chariots of the Lord, back in Psalms 98. Um, no, it's like it, Revelation 1 and 7, forgive me, we went there, behold, he cometh from clouds, basically his angels, the chariots, right, because the angels will be operating in chariots. The reason every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so a month. So all the nations will mourn because of him, you know. And really, uh, a lot of these people, they can't see that he's uh, uh, knocking at the door. He's right around the corner. That the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is, is, amen, is literally right here. But only the elect um, can sense it and sense the the, uh, the vibration changing, the power coming back uh, to the Israelites. Uh, back in Psalms 98. All right, because, hey, it's ultimately, hey, the, <laughs> it said, uh, did you know not the day of the Lord is going to be um, darkness and not light? And that is on a manifold meaning, but given hey, that fathership is going to cover the sky, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, the scriptures um, represent it or, you know, token as a mountain. That's how big uh, uh, the chariot that Yahweh Shai will be riding upon. You know, he's coming in his, in his maximum glory. And it's going to go into it. It reads, uh, Psalms 98 and 4, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp, the voice of a song. And a song goes into a song, right? It reads, With trumpets and sound of a of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. All right, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the King. So basically representing the uh, the joyful spirit the the mirth that will be in um when we receive salvation praising the lord with songs are we going to be rejoicing upon our beds because why it's going to be complete uh, peace upon the earth to where we, we don't have to suffer anymore we don't have to you know battle against satan and and wicked thoughts this flesh we don't have to be dwelling in flesh uh dwelling in this flesh a lot here we don't have to be um 
shit, waking up every day slaving, uh, being oppressed continuously, so on and so forth. It reads, let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And I believe the world in these is the actual world, uh, the globe. Yep, the inhabited earth, uh, because you do have um, different meanings of the word world, you know what I'm saying? Of course, that John 3 and 16, uh, you know what I'm saying, representing a harmonious arrangement. But this right here, all right, so like if I'm wrong, it means the, the whole world, right? The, the globe, the earth, because we know, hey, this damn devil is destroying the earth. That's why he, hey, he's going to be destroyed. Revelation 18 and 4, real quick. I believe it's 18 and 4. Damn, it's lucky. Uh, uh, 11 and 18, maybe. Yep. It reads, Revelation 11 and 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great. And what's that reward? Salvation, man. Mercy. Right? The the crowns. Lord willing, we are those men. And but this is the point. And should it destroy them which destroy the earth. And you see the what how the state of the world is in now. Under what? a little over five hundred years of of Esau Edom being the rule. It's it's fucking hell. You know, that's why the 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 fir trees are going to rejoice. The, the Lebanon trees, you know what I'm saying? All the earth is, is um, you know, the creatures are, are waiting. What do you say? The, the earnest expectation of the creatures, man. Waiting for, for righteous rulership <clears throat> to, to come to pass. And it will. All right, back to Psalm 78. And... Oh, it's Salakia, 98. Bear with me, Salakia. It says, uh, Psalm 98 and 7, Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof the world, and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. And I'll read it uh, in the NLT. Psalms 98 and 9, bef uh, Salakia, before the Lord, for the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. Okay. And really, it is going to be uh, the kingdom of heaven for us, but to these other nations, the ones that aren't Israel, who have to, uh, you know, basically go into servitude under the Israelites. Slavery. These other nations will be um, in subjection unto us for a thousand years. And then, you know what I'm saying, they're going to uh, go back to their to their lands and such. You know. But it, it's still going to be governed under the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh B'Hashim Yahweh Shai. That's why it's going to be, um, you know, complete justice and, and righteousness. Um on the forefront on this earth right because the kingdom of heaven will be on earth as it as it reads in the lord's prayer all right but that was basically the point all right lord's willing this is all edifying and exhorting and it all came together through the spirit with that i want to give all praise honor and glory again unto yahweh bahashim yahweh shai bahashim rechakwadash double honors again to the apostles and the elders of great millstone Shalom to the hopeful elect. Wa abad babah.